Welcome, everybody. We are getting started on our 21st year of Apache Cons. Well, we're not getting started. We got started in Las Vegas. We're finishing up our 21st year of, of Apache Cons this year and uh, in this beautiful city of Berlin, and I'm glad to see you all here. First thing I want to do is thank our sponsors. Our sponsors make this possible. Uh, our, we have platinum sponsor Google Cloud and gold sponsor eBay Tech and silver sponsor Amazon. So I want everybody to give a warm applause for making this conference possible. Excuse me. So first off, some important information. We are having a feather signing. There's a big, beautiful, colorful feather at the Apache booth. I have instructions to bring that feather home black. So everybody, please go over there and sign both sides of the feather. Um, speaking of feathers, we also have birds of a feather. If you want to meet with people in your interest group, whether it's IoT or um, smart cities or whatever your special interest is, you can sign yourself up for a birds of a feather at the flip chart next to the Apache booth. You can also sign up for a lightning talk tomorrow. Um, Shane is organizing this and Roman are moderating it. They will, they're, they're looking for contributions. This is the first time we're doing lightning talks in the morning. So if you want to promote your ideas, your talk, um, your special interest, or if you just have something, a fun story you want to share with everybody, you can do that tomorrow. I also want to point out that we have two free workshops that are satellite events to the, to the um, conference. One is being put on by Open Source Design. There's a total of 20 free open slots for that. I've registered, so I'll be there on Friday. There's also an Apache Airflow event. You can also go there, that's also free. Um, for the open source design event, um, you have to pay 10 uh, euros to register. You'll get that 10 euros back um, when you arrive there. The idea is to make sure that those limited slots don't get taken by people who aren't gonna show up. Uh, if you like to run, Jean-Claire is organizing a runner's club tomorrow at seven. Jean-Claire is right over there. Um, you're meeting at the Colwitz Platz at the statue there. So uh, I'm hope, I hope the weather's good. It's been nice these past couple of days. I hope it continues to be good for that. <clears throat> this is not just the 21st anniversary of ApacheCon. This is the 20th anniversary of the Apache Software Foundation. So we'll be celebrating this afternoon with cake. And I hope you guys also get a chance to talk to each other about some of the history, some of the things you remember happening at the Apache Software Foundation. Or if you're new, find an old timer and let them talk to you about it. It's all very interesting stuff. And in the talks, I'd appreciate it if, you, um, if you're tw twittering about us, uh, if you're tweeting about us, you're uh, talking on social media, use the tags, then people can find your stuff. So for today, we're, we have a busy program. Um, we, uh, we're, we're having keynotes until 10.40, then we'll have morning coffee, lunch starts at 1, and then we'll have another coffee break at shortly before 4.00. That's when, we, when we'll be doing the cake cutting. There will be the hackathon all day. And if in the evening you want to go out and meet with people, um, we have put up a uh, set of, of possible bars that are in the area. You can look on the website for those. Excuse me, just a You may have noticed, if you've been looking at our website for the program, there's been a glitch. Uh, you'll see that things are off by three and a half hours. We're working on that, but in the meantime, please uh, use the, the printed programs that are, that are hanging everywhere in the elevators and next to the booths um, if you're in doubt about when the, the uh, talk that you want to go to is at. And with that being said, I'd like to introduce our first talk. Our first talk is a panel We will be, they will be being moderated by Sander Stryker. Sander Stryker has worked as a product manager at Bloomberg and has served in senior roles in media and technology related to startups. And at the ASF, he has served in many roles. He served as the, as the president, he served as the executive vice president, 
and he served on the board of directors. So I want you to give a warm round of applause to Sander. Thank you all. Nice. Let him introduce you. It's really nice to be here and, uh, and seeing you all. Um, we have a, a subset of the founders of the ASF here, without whom uh, we wouldn't be celebrating the, the 20th anniversary. So from uh, the far end is uh, Dirk Willem van Geluk, Geluk. <laughs> Lars Eilebrecht, and Mark Cox. I didn't even need to prompt you for that, that's great. So while we've registered as a panel session, that's, that's really just a poor excuse to have chairs for these old guys, right? They've been doing this for 20 years, so now they can sit down. <laughs> um, I think um, uh, during the session, it would be great to just hear their stories. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll start with Mark. Um, I was, I was hoping for a picture here. <laughs> but it's not there. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Our prop is gone. I, I will describe the picture using an alt tag. <laughs> Thank you. Um, thanks, Sander. Um, good morning, everyone. So it was back in 1995 that Brian Bailendorf invited me to join the new HDPD mailing list. I'd been working on some issues, uh, security issues in the NCSA web server and finding and fixing those and sharing those with the NCSA folks, uh, but also Brian, who was a fellow web administrator. And, and Brian said, uh, these patches are great, why don't you come and join us? I've got a group of people uh, coming together to, to work on a web server based on the NCSA web server. It wasn't until 1998, though, that we first all met in person. IBM kind of sponsored us to come together in San Francisco, and, and the picture would have been the picture of our first meeting in person. Just before the actual discussions in an office, we went down a cliff and took pictures at a waterfall, um, as, as developers like to do. Um, I, I was really worried about that, actually. Um, I, I was really worried that we had all our eggs in one basket. We had nearly all the developers of the Apache web server in one place at one time. And it's not like San Francisco is known for natural disasters, right? What's the worst that could happen? Um, I was really worried as well because at that time, Microsoft were a huge, uh, store Apache is a huge risk to, to their business. We were rapidly taking away their market share of the web server market. And although that's not a very plausible risk, perhaps a more plausible risk was that we'd end up at Fisherman's Wharf eating the same bad sushi. Just the way my brain works. Um, now, if something bad had happened to us all on, the, on that day, the, the code would have survived, right? The code was on tens of thousands of machines around the world already. But the people, the people who shared the same goals, the same mission, the same vision would have gone away. And would the project still have existed and continued had that happened? Probably not. When I was thinking about this talk and when I gave this same talk at uh, Vegas uh, last month, kind of hit me that that is really what we mean by community over code, right? It was really important that the people were there and together and the code was not so. Personally, uh, Apache has intertwined itself over my life in the last 24 years. Started out with writing Apache Week, uh, through to working on Stronghold for a company called C2Net. C2Net got bought by Red Hat at the same time I was doing lots of work with lawyers, and that's how I ended up meeting my wife. At the first, one of the first Apache cons, uh, a group of Apache developers got together and decided to form the OpenSSL project. And whilst OpenSSL is not an Apache project, it was formed by a lot of Apache developers and has recently switched to the new versions uh, being under the Apache license, which is great news. In Vegas, uh, Jim Gureski said that he got more out of Apache than he could ever repay. And I think that's a sentiment a lot of us here have as well. And, and it's true for everyone, I think, who uses any Apache project that you get more out 
than you can put in. Uh, and I, I certainly personally see that as well. It's a mixed blessing knowing security. Um, it's not a job that many people really want to do. When I joined Red Hat, the first thing the, the new VP of engineering did was call me up and said, Mark, you know security. We don't have a security team. You're it. Uh, and that was the next 18 years of my life uh, dealing with Red Hat security issues until I kind of couldn't do that anymore. Um, I was in a great position, though. Red Hat now pay for my time to work on open source projects, uh, Apache and OpenSSL, and uh, dealing with security issues, of course. Um, so I'm now VP of security for Apache. We've got um, a Apache committee, uh, a committee who look after security issues across all projects and help those projects deal with them and manage them. In fact, uh, Dirk and Lars are both also on that committee. That's interesting to me because I've not coded for a long time, yet I can still make a really valuable contribution to Apache. I can give back by being part of that committee and, and adding my expertise to security issues. Um, to give you an example, the, the, uh, the security committee, we get 21,000 emails a year. Some of that's spam, of course. Some of that's people who are confused by the Apache license. Um, so it generally ends up about 400 a year of actual reported issues. Those get handed out to the projects to look after and to deal with. Uh, some of those are obviously real issues and some are not. And so we end up with about 150 uh, CVEs, which are fixed and published security issues a year. Uh, that's across about 85 projects. So that's, that's my involvement to date. And uh, I think that's now on to Lars or Sander. Lars, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so he, Mark mentioned that waterfall picture, which was supposed to be on, on there. But um, yeah, unfortunately, something went wrong. Um, but that initial meeting that, that Mark mentioned, um, unfortunately, I missed that. I was yeah, late to the party, so to speak. Um, because I only joined the uh, Apache group um, about a month later. Um, I was actually a, a student at that time, and uh, a German uh, publishing company had uh, previously approached me and asked, uh, would you like to write a book about the Apache web server? Because I started getting into this area of web technologies, and obviously, in 1998, it was the Apache web server, because that was the most popular web server software that was um, available. Um, so I started writing the book and ran into a lot of um, bugs. Bugs in the code, bugs in the documentation. In some cases, it wasn't even clear to me, is the documentation wrong or is the code wrong? Um, so I started submitting a lot of bug reports to the Apache group. Um, and uh, in some cases, they, they responded or fixed the issue. In some cases, I didn't really see things being turned around quickly enough. So eventually, I started submitting patches as well to my own bug reports. Uh, because, well, I needed to finish writing that book, and I, needed, I didn't want to document the, the faulty behavior or what I thought was faulty behavior. So, uh, yeah, eventually I got invited, and I was very, very honored to be, to be invited, but also a little bit surprised, because I thought, well, I've, I've contributed, yeah, but it's just some small patches here and there. It, it didn't uh, seem to me as, like, major contributions that would... Uh, make them invite me to become a member of the Apache group. Um, and I remember uh, mentioning this in, a, in, a, in an email, and I remember the um, response from Ben Laurie, who unfortunately cannot be here today. Um, it, he responded saying, like, um, if Apache would measure uh, people's value based on their contributed lines of code, the Apache group would be poorer for it. And I think that, that stuck with me, and I think it's still a very valid statement or very valid thing for the ASF in general today. Um, it's not just about code contributions. Um, it, contributions come in all forms and, and sizes. Um, for example, we have several or many foundation members who've never uh, coded a single line, uh, who've not contributed any code. And 
they have made valuable and very important contributions to the ASF. An important example is, uh, that I would like to mention today is Sally Kudari. Uh, she looks after public relations at the uh, ASF still today, and she's done that uh, and helped us with this whole topic of public, uh, public relations, um, uh, defining our, our brand and defining what the ASF actually is, and probably even help define what open source actually is um, from, a, from a public relations point of view. And she's done that from a very early um, stage in the life of the Apache Software Foundation. Um, personally, uh, in addition to code contributions, um, I've spent a lot of time with conference planning. Basically, when we created the foundation in uh, 1999, we had three top-level projects. Obviously, the Apache web server. Um, we had the Jakarta project, uh, which was intended to, or, or actually uh, helped us to develop various Java application solutions, uh, for example, Tomcat. And we had a third project, which was the conferences or conference planning project. And um, I kind of jumped at the opportunity to, to help with that, because I thought as a as a very, very big opportunity to um, to help grow our community of developers and, and users. Um, Mill already mentioned this in the beginning. We've, we've done this for, for more than 20 years now and, and developed um, many, many Apache conferences, um, roadshows, hackathon events, bar camps, etc. And I think it's one of the reasons why the Apache, ha why the Apache Software Foundation has grown into what it is today. Um, I remember when I went to the very, very first ApacheCon in 1998. Um, that was shortly I was uh, I became a member of the Apache of, of the Apache group. Um, it was an amazing experience for me. I, I met all these other developers for the for the first time, and it really motivated me to continue contributing because I wanted to continue working with these guys. And. Uh, I think it's, it's important to continue doing that. Yes, in, at the Apache Software Foundation, everything happens on mailing lists and, and all that, but I think we need that face-to-face -face time every now and then to help grow the community. And uh, looking at the audience now, I'm pretty sure there's some future committers and uh, foundation members sitting already in this audience who just haven't made that first small step in contributing, and it doesn't necessarily have to be code. What matters more is, is the people. It's the community over code um, thing that, that often gets mentioned as part of the Apache Software Foundation. And I think that's very important. Yeah, thanks, Lars. That's, that's definitely a, a key part that we, we want to keep emphasizing. Um, so many great stories here. Um, Dirk, do you want to go into like why uh, the foundation? <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll try to, to do some of that. Uh, I mean, basically for, for, for that why, kind of like I have to sort of like go back sort of like to, to, to northern Italy, sort of like to the Alps, to Lago Maggiore, uh, absolutely splendid environment, uh, where at the time I was sitting in a, in a very small office of the European Commission, uh, basically being what, what was be, would become a, a webmaster, uh, sort of like trying to sort of like uh, curate data, satellite data in this particular case, to sort of like make that available over the, over the, the first start of, of the internet. Um, and in many ways, sort of like it was a fairly lowly sort of like task. But then, sort of like I found this this online community of, of other webmasters, uh, people who sort of like just had sort of like much the same challenges, who were trying to keep their web servers alive, who needed sort of like to add security, who needed to add, in my case, things like the is map thing, so you could sort of like could sort of like draw areas on maps and things like that. And uh, sort of like a sort of environment where you could sort of like collaborate with, with other people uh, around that same code base, around that same goal, uh, which was sort of like helping you in sort of like your day-to-day your -day thing to do, in my case, sort of like maintaining a website with, with, with satellite images. Despite the fact that perhaps some of us sort of like were working for companies which are effectively their competitors. So you sort of like could sort of like separate what you were sort of like doing and delivering sort of like from the tools and the means you, you were using uh, for that. Um, and all of that was actually going actually really rather well, sort of like from the sort of like mid 90s onwards, until sort of like the, the end of the century, when, when all of a sudden a whole pile of things started to happen at the same time. And, and certainly for me personally, sort of like took me off guard. It was almost like a, a feeling of panic. 
because you had sort of like Elizabeth Frank and, and, and Rob McCool and, and, and uh, Mark Anderson on the browser side, who suddenly sort of like left uh, the, the, the NCSA, the National uh, Center for Supercomputing Application, Urbana Campaign, a university, to form what would later become Netscape. And we were working on their code base. We were sort of like maintaining that, that, that NCSA web service. So all of a sudden, sort of like our sort of like leading lights, especially Elizabeth Frank, sort of like, they were sort of like gone, and, and what would happen to that code? At the same time, Apache became more and more popular, so like more and more people started to collaborate and, and use that code base of ours. So, so like we became a very sort of like visible, uh, uh, almost like dominant, if you want, sort of like having a market share of 80%, 90%, these sort of numbers of, of all those web servers, which sort of like, of course, attracted a lot of aggression in the market because we tend to sort of like think that that big tech today is sort of like overly powerful. Well, I can tell you sort of like in the 90s, there was, it was a totally different set of big tech, but they're also like very, very, very powerful and, and very, very aggressive. So that sort of like felt scary also because in that time sort of like lawsuits against individuals and, and, and companies being aggressively bought and things were, were not exactly unheard of. Um, and then, but all, all the things were also happening, sort of like that collaboration was really going well and some companies are, were sort of like realizing, and IBM was sort of like one of the first, that actually their team of a few hundred uh, full-time IBM developers couldn't out-innovate this Apache group of people, this ragtag of group of volunteers who were sort of like collaborating around that code base, IBM sort of like couldn't keep up innovation-wise. So basically within IBM there was this plan formed like, well actually we'd like to sort of like basically join that group, so sort of like rather than continue our own Lotus Domino, sorry, our Domino uh, web server, we sort of like, like to use the Apache, uh, the, the Apache uh, server as, as, a, as our code base. But then, of course, sort of like the, the sort of like the grown-ups stepped in. The lawyers went like, "Okay, so you want to actually do this thing? But but who are those Apache people? Who 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 are they? What what are they? I mean, do they actually even exist?" And of course, we didn't exist. We were just like a mailing list. And and this wasn't helped that at that time there were sort of like articles in the New York Times saying that sort of like, "Oh, it doesn't matter on the internet whether you were a dog," and 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 sort of like the lawyers had clearly read that one. And there was another one sort of like in I think the Economist where one of one of our own sort of like explained how great it was to work on open source in Apache because you could do it sort of like in the middle of the night but naked, drinking gin and tonic. So that wasn't quite the right sort of like thing. So, so the IBM lawyers went like, yeah, well, this, this is not on. But um, in their wisdom, sort of like, they then sort of like still came to us and actually uh, gave us sort of like a, a very large gift, uh, essentially the use of a teleconference line. So basically they made it possible for us to actually talk over the phone um, sort of like directly to us. Because keep in mind for that time, even though we'd been around for quite a while, we'd never met in person. We'd never sort of like phoned each other. We had no idea what, what, what we looked like. And at that time, sort of like a teleconference now is easy, but back then, sort of like you would easily sort of like pay a couple of thousand dollars for just sort of like an hour international telephone conference at that scale. So that was actually a, a rather large gift. So it actually led us, sort of like for the very first time, sort of like to talk about those things, um, and then sort of like ultimately, sort of like as was, was described before, we sort of like ended up so actually in, in San Francisco to actually for the first time meet face to face and sort of like discuss how could we sort of like actually uh, form a foundation? Should we form a foundation? Should we sort of like formalize ourselves a little bit? And, and of course the answer sort of like was already a little bit sort of like in that previous story. And the answer was yes, because actually that aggression was, was actually a serious concern. Um, uh, the market share was very serious. I mean, basically it, it, it was clear that this was no longer something which could be done purely by, by a group of volunteers which, which, which sort of like barely had, had ever met. Um, now, at that same sort of like time, and, and there's a question that sort of like I, quite, quite, I get quite often, sort of like, why, why did, how on earth did you end up as a Delaware Incorporate? Why did sort of like this, this foundation end up in the US where they don't even have the legal concept of a foundation? Because Apache is actually an incorporated, we're actually like a, basically a normal company. And, and the answer sort of like dates to that time as well, because we sort of like looked at it back then, and yes, I mean, there were many sort of like considerations about sort of like hosting the code and, and managing the code in Europe because actually Europe has got very good foundation protections in the, in the law for, for, for long-term foundation which want to maintain an asset like code. But on the other side, we were really sort of like about people, we were worried about aggression and of course that aggression would probably come from the US, from the big tech companies of that time in the US and actually it was sort of like felt that actually to protect people better, sort of like the US was sort of like a much better place. And Delaware sort of like was interesting because um, it was one of the few states where you could sort of like quite easily have incorporations without actually physically going there all too often, do some of your board meetings by phone or by email. So actually they sort of like allowed a little bit more innovation in sort of like how you set up your, your organization, how you had your board meetings, how you had your annual meetings and things like that. So that was ultimately sort of like why we, we ended up sort of like as a, as a Delaware Incorporated. 
with, of course, on the side, uh, <coughs> the little issue that, that uh, uh, cryptography at that time was still sort of like not something you could uh, uh, very sort of like easily export or, or otherwise um, move around. So kind of like that sort of like who sort of like basically we sort of like then suddenly became an incorporated. That was a massive amount of work because actually we'd sort of like we'd kept a very nice CVS record of all our code, but we'd actually never gone through it and actually figured out what came from whom, when, and how. So actually that was actually a process we did. We sort of like whitewashed our code. We sort of like made sure that we knew from every line either from who it was and that that person has agreed to sort of like donate to the Apache Software Foundation, the legal entity. Or we sort of like removed it, or it was basically part of what was called a bullock grant because it was sort of like donated by, by a commercial entity as a, as a big block or by, by NCSA. And that's sort of like as a principle we, we sort of like still have today, sort of like that whenever sort of like the ASF touches a piece of code, we sort of like try to make it absolutely clean so that the community can sort of like unencumbered, uh, sort of like maintain it uh, for, 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 the, for the time being. For me, sort of like I was so basically at the time sort of like still sort of like mostly sort of like sitting there in Italy in the Alps, sort of like working on my stuff. And it, this was all, yeah, I think it, it, it made me sort of like feel a little bit easier about things. It also made me feel like actually if, if I drop out, there's a whole community and this code will live on and actually we can continue to serve these satellite pictures for, for many years to come to do weather forecast or whatever else. And, and that sort of like felt good, but it wasn't really resonating. That actually for me personally changed uh, about sort of like the turn, uh, basically in the year 2000, when there was a series of conferences in the, the Moscone, the big conference uh, center in Silicon Valley in, in San Francisco. And there were, by, by pure coincidence, they were sort of like back to back, one after the other. And, and by, by more or less by coincidence, basically, sort of like I was, I was having to give a, a short talk or a, or a presentation at each of those. And at the first one, basically, I was there on stage. I can't remember if it was Sun or Oracle or Tipco, but it was one of the big guys at that time. And basically, the audience, sort of like some of the people in the audience were like tearing into me and telling me that I was evil and that I, that I was clearly in the pocket of that other tech company, the other competing company, and, and that we were completely biased and that we're, we're, we're only helping, helping competition. And, and that was kind of like a little bit of a shock, that first meeting, also because I knew that, that in that organization, I think it was Sun actually, uh, lots of people actually were, were very supportive of Apache. There were lots of developers within, within Sun which were actually working on Apache code, helping to get Jakarta going, helping to get Cocoon and Tomcat and the XML parsers going. So I'm going, like, where, where is this aggression coming from? But then the week after, I was at the competitors' conference, and exactly the same thing happened. I was sort of like being accused of people at pockets. I was, you're, 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 you're like sort of like Oracle's bitch. I think was was the thing actually, which actually ended up on the front page of of the local newspaper. And that was kind of like interesting. And then the third conference, the week after, happened, and exactly the same thing happened again. And that's sort of like the third time for me drove home that, wait a second, I've now been accused of being in everyone's pocket by everyone else. So basically, it's a completely cross relation. So that made me feel that actually. This Apache thing, it may have something going it. That, that license, it really does seem to let people collaborate across company boundaries, across country boundaries, and sort of like create a safe and fair playing field where you can sort of like collectively work on code, even though there's lots of aggression and lots of competition and lots of things happening outside you, you can actually sort of like make this code live there, sort of like make this code sort of like uh, survive uh, people, survive companies coming and going. I mean, if you sort of like look at the people we were really, really worried about back sort of like back in the sort of like turn of the centuries, most of those companies don't, no longer exist and the few which, which still exist are kind of like either marginalized or our best friends today. And some of the company which were sort of like really pro open source right now, we're actually worrying about them right now. So actually Apache sort of like has given me sort of like some, some peace of mind that actually that actually doesn't really matter. We can sort of like manage and sort of like maintain things. We can sort of like have that community live on and on and on, even if sort of like the players change, the code change and things like that. So that's sort of like is, is, is I think sort of like my, my, my closing thought there, that, that sort of like that license we have, which sort of like lets sort of like, lets you sort of like separate things and sort of like let a community sort of like to, to survive and handle that code sort of like in, in a safe way. I think that's one of the most valuable things I think for, for me personally sort of like Apache has, has, has brought to me. Thanks. Thanks, Derek. That, that's really wonderful. I'm sure that a lot of people that are in the audience, whether they've been around for a long time or not, um, have not heard all of this before. So that's, that's really great, and I'm, I'm hopeful that we, uh, we get to share more stories. Um, if you want to talk to any one of the founders later on, um, on their badges, they have this, this bright, like, <laughs> fluorescent thing um, that says 20 plus. So um, 
if you can remember their faces, which I'm sure you will, um, you can recognize them by, uh, by that. Um, I think all of this together just shows how, how strong uh, the foundations of the foundation are uh, and why we're here uh, 20 years later, um, which is great. So I'd like to have another round for, for the founders that made this possible. And with that, um, I'm going to thank you, and uh, you'll have a, a great conference following this. Thank you.